Hey, how's it going? Today I want to talk a little bit about the blues and what I would consider my favorite and most important trick that I've ever learned when it comes to playing over a 12 bar blues. And in this case I'm referring to a dominant blues or a major blues. So using dominant 7 chords or ninth chords. Um, so I'm not referring to a minor blues here, but what we're going to take a look at is taking the pentatonic scale and manipulating it to make it sound a little more bluesy. I guess the best way to describe it. So basically to start off with this, you'd want to already know how to play the G minor pentatonic scale. So I'll do it in the key of G. And so this here, we have the sixth string, or the low E string, third fret, so your G note, the B flat, which is on the sixth fret, okay, the next string, which is the A string, or the fifth string, third fret, which is C, fifth fret, which is D, and then the third fret on the fourth string, or the D string, which is an F note. Okay, so we have G, B flat, C, D, and F. Now if you extend that throughout the next three strings, or the next octave, we can take a look at the fifth fret on the D string, which is a G note again. B flat, which is third fret on the third string, or the G string. So it's a B flat note. C, which is the fifth fret on the same string. D again, so it's the third fret on string number two, or the B string. F, which is the sixth fret on the second string, B string again. And we have G on the third fret of the thinnest high E string. Okay? Now, we can also add the B flat in, which is the sixth fret of that same string. What we get is this series of notes. So if you already know the pentatonic scale, or the minor pentatonic scale, basically you're just starting that out in the G note, okay, on the third fret. Now, you can also use the blues scale for this. So uh, for any of you who know the blues scale, the minor blues scale, adding the flat fifth in, which is D flat here. So typically, um, over top of a blues, you'll hear a lot of players play just with the minor pentatonic scale. So I'll just vamp a G chord here, G7 chord. Okay, so just with the pentatonic by itself. Okay, or the blues scale. Now, you can move around the neck. And so when I play the blues, I'm not just sitting in one position. I'm not just sitting on the third fret. I'm going to run up. up and down the neck. Okay? But for this sake of this lesson here, this quick little lesson, we're going to take a look at just the, uh, we'll call it you know, the first shape or the first position of the pentatonic scale. So what we're going to do to make it sound more bluesy is we're going to actually alter the scale just a little bit to match up with the G7 chord. Okay, Now, in the minor pentatonic, basically we have what's called a minor third. All right? So essentially what we're looking at is the third interval from whatever scale you're looking at. So in this case here, the minor third instead of a major third. Now, if you don't know much about theory, basically, it's, you know, let's say the third interval is the difference between a minor chord and a major chord. So a B flat would be part of a G minor, just on a simple basis here, and a B would be part of a G major. Now, if you extend it, a G minor, or sorry, a B flat would be part of a G minor seven. And we could take a look at the B flat being from either G major 7 or a G7. So in a blues context, the G7 is where we're going to sit. Right? Now the G7 chord, what I already talked about in terms of what we're putting this over, the G7 chord has a B note in it, and the minor pentatonic scale has a B flat. So to, in order to make it sound more like the chord and make it match up with the chord, this note needs to be altered a bit. The B flat needs to be altered to the B. So there's a few ways that a lot of blues players do this. One, simply bending the notes. So bending your B flat notes, a semitone up, and then resolving to the root note after. Okay, that's a really common way to do it. So this B flat, third fret on the third string, we can bend that, semitone up, kill it, and then go to the root note. Now the root note always sounds good after doing this. So if you you bend that minor third to a major third, resolve into the root note. That's where it's going to sound really nice, okay? But you can also do other notes afterwards, but for this case here, we're just going to stick with going to the root note right after the bend, okay? So we'll call this the minor third to the major third, back to the root note. Now, for those of you who know a lot about theory, technically this is not called a minor third, the B flat, okay? So the B flat, in this case, real in real theory, or in uh, proper theory, we're going to call that a sharp nine. 
But for the sake of this video, we'll just call it the flat third because it'll be easier to lay out on your pentatonic diagram. Most often, if you looked at a diagram of the pentatonic scale, you're going to see this being called a minor third or a flat three. So to add in that whole sharp nine thing, right now it might be sort of confusing. Okay, so we'll just sort of stick with bending the flat three up to a major third, resolving to the root. But just keep in mind that for those of you who know theory, it's not really a flat three, so what I'm saying there is technically incorrect, but we'll use that for the description, okay? So by bending the flat three up, semitone, resolving to the root, we get a really nice bluesy sound. Now if you find your blues, or sorry, your B flat notes all over the neck, you can make this sound in many different places, okay? So let me give you an example. I'll just play in the one position we started off with. shift All right, so we get some sounds like that, some bluesy sounds. Now if you look at this in the context of like a more jazz approach, a jazzier approach, uh, what we're going to look at, instead of bending that note, we're going to either slide in from B flat to B, or we're going to actually do a hammer on. All right, so you can always do a hammer on or a slide. Now this would sound like this. You can see that sounds a bit jazzier, right? So whatever style suits you, I would say I would go with the bend or the hammer-ons. Now, this is just the first stage of this lesson, so with this, uh, with this in mind, I want you to practice this just on a G7 chord. Now, once you get it comfortable going through the pentatonic scales in different positions, bending the, the flat three uh, to a major third, resolving to the root note all over the neck, try to change the key. So instead of doing in the key of G, you do the key of A. Now eventually you can take this and apply it to a 12 bar blues, but at first you, you want to get comfortable with this concept just in one key. So if we do this in a 12 bar blues, you'd want to take this and move it over different chords. There's a whole bunch of things you can do with it. Um, but for now, just stick with the one chord to make it easy. Now if you're playing over a 12 bar blues for the time being, what well, you can do on the one chord, so on the G7, you do that trick I'm showing you, and in the minor third to major third. Uh, when you go to like the C7 or C9 chord, just play the G minor pentatonic. Same when you go to the D7. For now, until you know some phrases to put there, just play what you would normally do on the D7 chord, okay? Uh, but that's only if you already know how to play over 12 bar blues and you already know sort of the idea of when those chords come in, okay? So for everyone else looking at this, just practice bending your minor thirds to a major third and then resolve into the root note. So I'll include some sample phrases. Uh, I'll try to record them as well, and I'll also give you a diagram of where those flat thirds are across the whole neck, just so you can see it. Alright, so hope you have fun with this. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, because I'd love to answer them for you.